Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1984 comedy classic, Police Academy. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Brian for requesting uh, this review, as well as reviews of the entire Police Academy series. And if there is another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, Feel free to donate to uh, my PayPal or my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, Police Academy is one of those films that a lot of people grew up with. I'm not actually one of them. I remember seeing bits and pieces of it on TV while I was flipping through channels uh, when I was a kid, as well as some of the sequels. And I remember, you know, having some fun with it, but. It was never really one of my favorites, but this is a movie that over the years I've watched more and more, and I gotta be honest, now I'm a huge fan of this film. I love this movie. I think this film is one of the best comedies of the 80s, it's honestly one of my favorite comedies uh, ever, really, because it's just so much fun to watch. And not only is it side-splittingly hilarious at times, I mean, the podium scene is legendary in terms of just fall out of your chair laughing so hard till it hurts. But it's also just a, a, a really uh, lighthearted good time. Like, it's the kind of movie that just puts you in a good mood. Every time you watch it, like you could be having a bad day and then you put on Police Academy and then by the time you get to the end credits and the song, I'm going to be somebody by Jack Mack and the Heart Attack, you're feeling better. You're, you're feeling a, a lot better about uh, your, your situation or your place in life. And I think there's something to be said about a film that that can consistently do something like that. It's directed by Hugh Wilson and this is his directorial debut. Uh, prior to this, he did a lot of writing. Uh, I think he directed a lot of TV work like WKRP in Cincinnati. And to me, his direction is really underrated. For a first-time director to handle a film like this that has so much energy and at the same time throw in some really ambitious camera work like this really... Uh, impressive tracking shot where he's panning from uh, one uh, window to the next uh, of the academy and the camera is panning uh, it's panning this way actually so it's going this way right, no actually I think it goes that way actually it goes this way so it goes this way to one window to the next and it's not just one straight shot it's also a shot that travels and goes in a couple different directions and different angles. It's the kind of thing you would see out of a Hitchcock film. I'm not kidding. And it's a really great looking shot. And there's a, quite a few other shots like that in this film. Where it's just a really well shot movie. That really shows that this guy has some real talent. Has a real eye for uh, cinema. And really knows how to shoot comedy in particular. And to really maximize the pratfalls or the uh, comedic timing of uh, a line of dialogue or really just create a, a very uh, controlled but chaotic looking movie in the vein of something like Airplane. And yeah, I think he did a phenomenal job. And apparently he wasn't the first choice. I think uh, the the studio, the producers, they were actually considering Dom DeLuise, which that would have been interesting to see what Dom DeLuise would have done with Police Academy. But uh, that ultimately fell through. And so they went and uh, decided to go with Hugh Wilson. But Hugh Wilson initially didn't want to do it either unless he was able to... I think actually what happened was it's the reverse. They wanted him to write the script, but they weren't necessarily wanting him to direct. 
or at least do a rewrite on the script because the script is by Pat Proft and Neil Israel who wrote the original uh, draft and the original draft of the film was a, a lot more raunchy and had other elements in it that weren't as much of a crowd pleaser. So the the producers, they wanted somebody that they could bring on to punch up the dialogue, tone down some of the, the harsher edges. And that's when they decided to settle on Hugh Wilson. But Hugh Wilson was like, I'm not going to do it unless I get to direct the movie. And since they were kind of in a time crunch in terms of getting a director and getting the script uh, uh, finished, because the script was kind of in sort of a bit of limbo for a little bit. Like it was initially a concept by the film's producer, Paul Mazalonski. He uh, requested uh, this. Uh, well, he didn't request. Uh, he came up with this concept when he was um, working on the shoot for the right stuff. And in order to secure uh, 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 safety for the parade scene, they uh, hired the police. And the police didn't have anyone other than police academy recruits to uh, be there for, you know, riot, potential riot control. And... Uh, the producer, he saw all this and he was like, well, this is this is absurd. This is kind of silly. Um, none of these people look like they're going to be police officers. And he thought that would be a fun idea for a comedy. Have a bunch of these unlikely recruits and have them be the focus of a comedy. And so he wrote like a three page uh, treatment, brought it to Alan Ladd uh, of um, the Ladd Company which is one of the uh, which was the studio that would ultimately uh, finance the film and they liked it that's when pat proft and neil israel were uh, brought on because pat proft had actually worked on police squad with leslie nielsen and then pat proft and neil israel script is a little bit too uh, uh out there at times so then they decided to search for someone else and that's where they wound up uh finding hugh wilson and, and the rest is history in fact pat proft and neil israel's script like there's like 20 different elements at least that ultimately wound up in the final draft but a large chunk of it was just completely rewritten by hugh wilson so a lot of the film's less raunchy more I wouldn't say family friendly, but less blunt energy is very much uh, due to Hugh Wilson and his experience with uh, sitcom television. And that's why this film has that kind of vibe of a really good episode of a really fun sitcom. And I think that does have a wider reach than a more edgy, raunchier script. And that's a big reason why the film was such a huge hit all over the globe when it came out is, is because of that, because it was something that translated so easily and so well. But yeah, Hugh Wilson's direction is uh, dynamic, it's strong, it's really uh, solid stuff, and uh, his writing is also really good. I think the overall concept of the film is really fun. There really weren't a ton of Police Academy films, especially not uh, in this vein. And it was just a great vehicle for a bunch of different characters that are of varying personalities. Like you have the lead, Mahoney, who is, in a lot of ways, he's a total joker. He's the kind of guy who you might consider a slacker. He doesn't take things seriously. You have uh, Moses Hightower, who's this big intimidating presence, but he has a, a heart of gold. You've got uh, this overweight, heavyset guy named Barbara, who is picked on, and it has a, a really effective arc throughout the film where he develops confidence in himself. Uh, 
throughout uh, the course of the story while he's uh, training at the police academy. You've got this character named uh, Larvel Jones, who was actually not in the original script. Uh, this was a character that was added to the film uh, after uh, the producers, they saw uh, Michael Winslow perform and they thought, this guy's got a pretty funny act and the whole sound effect thing, that could really be a good fit for this movie. So uh, he was brought on pretty much last minute and then his character was kind of written uh, while they were shooting. Um, you've got this guy named George Martin or George Martin, who is this guy who's a total ladies man, who his character is essentially just parroting Scarface. <laughs> Uh, with complete with the the Cuban accent and everything, but he's actually just a regular guy. He just uses the accent to get the women. Yeah, David Graff's character, Eugene Tackleberry, who is this gun nut, who is a former security guard, and like he he opens up the film, and you know you're in good for a, a really fun comedy when you have the opening scene where he's the security guard at this, uh, uh this business company and he just, he thinks he hears something suspicious. So he breaks down the door and starts firing. And it was just the employees who were throwing a little party for him. And then they're just terrified and scared shitless. Cause this guy just opened fire on them. This psycho just fired a bunch of round rounds aimlessly and uh, Tackleberry is just like, oh, you guys, like you, you know that you're in for a really fun comedy when you just get to the opening of the movie, which is a really fun way to open the film. And then just the way that all the different characters were introduced uh, was uh, very uh, efficient. It was quick. It was to the point. But you got the gist of who these characters are and what their personalities are right off the bat. And. That's not always necessarily an easy thing to do. Like some screenwriters make it seem like it's really, really simple and just cut and paste. Um, and this is kind of one of those scripts where you look at how they introduce all these characters and it's so seamless and it's so well paced that you think that, oh, anyone can do it. But I've seen plenty of films like Police Academy that take way too long to introduce the characters or don't introduce them very well at all. And it just showcases how even some of the simpler aspects of this script are still something very uh, noteworthy. Um, and yeah, just so many characters because you have Hooks, who's this soft-spoken uh, recruit. You've got these guys, uh, Blanks and Copeland, who are essentially the teacher's pets. Uh, you have uh, Kim Cattrall's character, Karen Thompson, who is tired of this life uh, that she's living uh, as some lavish, privileged uh, uh, socialite, and she wants to um, be a police officer. And you also have, like, Debbie Callahan, who is one of the sergeants who is training other uh, recruits you got Harris who is definitely the antagonist uh, of of the film who's always antagonizing all of the recruits and wants them all gone you have Lassard who's this clueless uh commandant at the police academy uh who in a lot of ways steals the film when it comes to almost every scene that he's in because of just his endearing obliviousness uh, and he's the focal point of one of the funniest scenes you will ever see when it comes to the podium, uh, uh, uh blowjob sequence. Um, so yeah, it's just a really, uh, good script when it comes to just establishing all these characters, giving them things to do and giving them a, a little bit of a focus at times. So they actually become a little more fleshed out and even though there's not a ton of character depth 
there's enough focus on their personality that it makes it so you genuinely do start to really like these characters. And the reason for Mahoney getting to the police academy, I also think is really inspired, takes inspiration from real life things where, oh, you have a criminal and he has to either go to the military or he'll go to jail. So instead of doing the military angle, it's police academy. So I, I like that. I, th I like how he was introduced as this guy who's working at, at, at this uh, company parking cars and this client is a total douchebag and there are no parking spots and the guy won't shut up and he won't get the point. And so Mahoney, due to pressure by his boss, <laughs> drives the car and drives it on two wheels and then parks it in like a spot. But there is no real spot. So that's the whole point. That's a whole joke. And then he gets arrested and then the whole ultimatum is set up. And it's a really clever ultimatum because it makes it so Mahoney can essentially get away with anything in terms of pranks, in terms of uh, insubordination, because he can't get kicked out. Like he has to, he can't, he, he has to quit. He, he, actually, he can't, he can't quit. And if he's kicked out, it has to be for something that is extreme, which is ultimately what happens later on. But all the pranks and all this stuff, you could get away with till the cows come home because of, of the stipulations that are put in place. And the gags, the pranks, they're really funny. They're not what you would consider to be, I would say, the most original. But, I mean, the classics are funny for a reason. And the the various different uh, things that they do to Harris is comedy gold. And there's even other little little notes here, little bits in the script that I really liked, like Hightower and how he didn't know how to drive and how one night he just gets Mahoney to teach him how to drive and they wind up getting involved in a police chase the night before his test for uh, the driving portion of, of uh, the academy. And... The love story that uh, blossoms between uh, Mahoney and um, Thompson, I, I think that was rather sweet as well. And there's just a lot of moments for these characters to shine. Tackleberry, he's a total psychopath, but he's hilarious. Like the 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 intensity of his character, the way that. Uh, the script is written and just provides a graph with so much to work with is just always a, a, a riot. It really is. Um, uh, Larvel Jones and how he's able to use his sound effects to actually get out of a situation. Um, and I will say this in terms of the script, like there's one little bit, it's very minor, but I wasn't really as into the whole brief fling between uh, George Martin and uh, Callahan. I felt like those two were not a good fit. I really wish that it was more of a burgeoning uh, romance between Callahan and Tackleberry. Like That just felt like that was just a perfect match. And I don't know why they didn't do that. Um... But yeah, other than that, like even the finale, I really like. I like the fact that they're thrown into this riot situation. And I like it even more because it's based on a real story. It's based on a real event that happened with a bunch of police academy recruits. Because the writers, they went to police academies. They observed and took notes and based characters in the script based on real people like hooks is actually based on a real recruit who was soft-spoken and uh mahoney 
isn't necessarily based on a real person, but it's based on the personalities and the sensibilities and the sense of humor of Pat Proft and um, the the other writer, um, Neil Israel. So, yeah, there's just a, a, a lot of shenanigans that ensue with this script, but it's fit together really well. Of course, you got the Blue Oyster uh, bar stuff. And that was actually handled rather tastefully, surprisingly enough. Like, I didn't really think it was that homophobic. Like, it wasn't really trying to set things up that, oh, it's funny because, you know, these these bikers at this bar are gay. It's funny because of, of the dance number and and the two guys who were straight who were roped up into it. Um... And yeah, I like how in the end Harris gets uh, um, in a situation that he needs help uh, from the recruits to ensure his safety and his own livelihood. And it leads to Mahoney becoming a hero and and uh, the recruits that he essentially forced to quit coming in to uh, uh, save him. I think that's actually a good way to uh, round things out when it comes to the story. It's a good way to finish the arc and the ending, which was actually a, a shot after the, the initial screening of the film, like the initial screening for the film was really successful. And a lot of people really liked the movie and thought it was hilarious, but the ending didn't quite click for them. So the producers uh, decided to shoot the scene where the fellatio makes another appearance. Uh, and that was, I think, uh, f uh, based on an idea from uh, um, Mazurlorski, uh, the film's main producer, because he was just, he saw the reaction that the fellatio scene had with Lazard. And that was like one of the biggest reactions from the audience and so he felt like oh it'd be a good good thing to reprise for the ending and he was right I, I thought that was really really funny uh and yeah it, it's just a really fun screenplay that doesn't take itself too seriously it's not a satire like other critics i guess were upset that it wasn't like roger ebert who gave the film zero stars for some reason i'm like Oh, it's not a satire. It's like, it's not supposed to be a satire. Not everything has to say something about society. Sometimes you can have a screenplay like Police Academy that's not satirizing anything in particular. It's just being a fun, lighthearted comedy that's emphasis is on the cast of characters. And there's a reason why this film still endures to this day because those characters are so strong and their personalities are are so uh, endearing that people still find this film to be immensely enjoyable. But as good as the script is, like this film is definitely made by its cast. Steve Gutenberg, who apparently was not the only choice, uh, they had a long list of people that were considered for Mahoney including Billy Crystal, Tom Hanks, Michael Keaton, Bill Murray, Judge Reinhold, Jerry Seinfeld, Robin Williams, Bruce Willis, John Travolta, and Rick Moranis. And actually, uh, one guy who was really close was David Naughton. In fact, David Naughton was so close to getting the role that uh, Steve Gutenberg thought he didn't have a chance because the pr producers and everybody who was at the audition was really reacting strongly to Naughton. But history would have it that um, Mahoney would go to Steve Gutenberg and the rest is history. And Steve was just born to play this role. Uh, this is just a really uh, great role for him. He has this ability to just be the likable wise ass. You know, he's got that charm about him and he's a total wise ass, but but you like the guy and you like being around him. And you also see that he still means well. 
And ultimately, you do root for him. You want him to stop being such a screw-up and find some stability. And when he finds that with the police academy, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty crowd-pleasing moment, especially when he gets to also experience it alongside uh, Karen Thompson, played by the just luscious and just gorgeous Kim Cattrall in her prime. Like, just a total babe. And also very capable of, of holding her own when it comes to uh, working alongside all the other males in the cast and just having her own moments to shine. Bubba Smith uh, is a force of nature as Hightower. So uh, uh, intimidating, but also so genuinely uh, heartwarming and like a guy that has this sort of lovable teddy bear energy, but can also kick some butt. Um, Donovan Scott, one of the more underrated members of this cast. I really liked his uh, performance as Barbara, especially when he starts gradually becoming more confident, actually is able to hold his own in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The whole scene where he beats up the bullies that were giving him crap earlier in the movie is really cathartic and it works as well as it does because of what Donovan brings to it. And Donovan is just a really underrated physical comic as well. And he just went all out for this role. Uh, Michael Winslow, uh, a scene stealer with some really realistic sound effects that he makes with his voice. And he also has a lot of uh, charisma. Uh, he and Steve Gutenberg were a really good pair. The, the scenes that they were in together Andrew Rubin is kind of there for me. Um, he's all right. Uh, David Graff, though, is Tackleberry. Terrific. Like, this guy is a total nut job, but there's still a, a, a endearing quality to, to the performance. Like, he's a nut job and he's a gun nut, but he seems like he's still a good guy. Like, he doesn't seem like he's totally so far off the reservation that you can't like sit down and have a beer with them. Uh, Bruce Mahler is Fackler. He was okay. A lot of his stuff was kind of, you know, the nerdy guy who's uh, very non-confrontational, but somehow winds up uh, getting into some sort of conflict and getting out in the end. Uh, Marion Ramsey, she was really fun as Hooks. The way that she was able to do the little soft voice and then just bellow out, uh, you know, uh, a line of dialogue was really hilarious. Like I honestly cracked up just hearing her do her soft stuff. Cause she was just, she was just doing it in a way that was so unique and so much fun. It was so funny. Cause like the, the whole bit where she doesn't even finish the entire, uh, line. I, I wonder if that was improvised. Because that just made it even funnier. And that's what makes the whole bit where she's like, just, you know, drop it, dirtbag. You know, that just makes it so much uh, more hilarious. Because that juxtaposition of like the little, and then, and then just the, the loud, uh, booming uh, voice. The two, uh, uh, knuckleheads who uh were um working with harris brand von hoffman and scott thompson the two were also really good together uh i i feel that they were also some of the more underrated members of this cast really had a lot of fun with those two definitely the types of uh, characters that were just total kiss asses but the way that they played these characters and the way that the both of them just worked off of each other was really uh strong and, and 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 was genuinely humorous on more than one occasion and of course GW Bailey is Harris like just one of the most memorable hard asses you will ever see in any movie you bought that this guy was just so irritated and annoyed with everyone at this, this academy that he wanted to shoot himself some days. 
Like you, you, you really got that this guy is just fed up, and it, it just made the scenes with the guy even funnier, especially when it when he gets really upset or he gets put in his place. And he's a really underrated uh, comic actor because there's a lot of moments where he'll just like give a look or just move a certain way. Like the whole bit where he tells Mahoney to leave while he's looking at the women who are uh, topless taking a shower through the window and, and he stops to take a peek and then the women look at him and then he gets all flustered. And just the way that GW Bailey played that was really funny. And there were quite a few moments like that, like in the climax when the criminal is pointing a gun at uh, Mahoney and Harris and uh, uh, T- Hightower is there too. And the criminals like asking like, who should I shoot first? And Harris is doing like this stuff with his eyes being like, it's him. It's him. You know, he's not even, he's not, he can't, he can't use his hands. So he's just using his eyes and like his head to to insinuate and try to get Hightower to choose Mahoney. Um, So yeah, there's just a lot of moments like that with Harris that is just really funny. Um, And George Gaines as Eric Lassard, like, Total Leslie Nielsen vibes, but in a good way. Uh, really brings out like the the best of you know the bumbling uh, type of character, but with with a with a genuine heart. Like the guy cares. He cares about his recruits. He cares about uh, uh, the uh, academy. But you know that he's not entirely uh, uh, all there. Um, but just leads to some really, really funny moments. And like just the just the acting in the fellatio scene from him is just comedy gold. And I also want to mention Leslie Easterbrook as as Callahan. Um she's tough, but um she has her own way to really uh, provide a certain amount of charisma to this character. This character could easily just be boring, but the way that she handles it, it's anything but. And when it comes to other aspects of the film, like the cinematography by Michael D. Margulies is fine for what kind of film this is. The editing by Robert Brown and Zach Steinberg really does match the zany nature of, of the direction and the screenplay rather well. The music by Robert Folk, though, is in a lot of ways one of the reasons why the film is so successful because this score is very prominent throughout the movie. It's this March and it just acts as a really effective backdrop for a lot of different scenes in the movie. And the way that uh, the composer incorporated the score in different uh, fashions throughout the movie was really good and how he also adjusted his score to fit the certain setting of the movie so we would have the score sound a certain way while it was at the academy but then would have it sound different a little more urban and not as uh academic or uh military when it's out on the streets and can't talk about the music without mentioning the soundtrack a lot of really uh nice and and just catchy uh tracks but the standout one is jack mac and the heart attack i'm gonna be somebody that's the kind of song i could put on and just always get a kick out of it and it would always just put a smile on my face so yeah and and that's just a perfect way to uh, describe the film it's just one of those movies you can put on get a kick out of it and it'll just put a smile on your face uh and it's definitely not going to bore you. It's like 96 minutes. I don't know why so many critics were so unenthusiastic about the movie when it came out, especially Roger Ebert. His review for the movie is a turd. Uh, I might even link it in the video description just so people can read just this this nonsense. Talk about how it's not funny at all. Mentioning about how it doesn't satirize anything. And specifically talks about how Bubba Smith 
should have been more cowardly, which is really just shady to me. Like that, that is a really shady is an understatement. That's a really shitty thing to say. Um, because this film was actually ahead of its time in terms of portraying an African American as the opposite of what they were portrayed as in a lot of these comedies. They did have like the big black guy who was a coward. And that was something that would, was a really common trope. So to turn that around and have him be the complete opposite and even be a guy who actually defends hooks in one scene from racial discrimination is really uh, 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 something that makes me question what the hell Roger Ebert was thinking when he wrote that review. But I, I definitely don't question this film that much. Uh, it's a movie that after it's, after it's over, I honestly want to watch it again. It's, it's that engaging and that entertaining of a film. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of Police Academy. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.